Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and I'm back with another video in my Samosa video quilt along. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I like to put up my design wall so I can audition my blocks for the finished layout, then we'll piece them together and create the finished quilt top. Alright, so here are my Samosa quilt blocks. So I'm assuming that you've pieced your blocks together, you have trimmed them down to size and given them a good press. Now we get to play around with the blocks and audition them to create whatever the finished design is that we want our finished quilt top to look like. So first let's talk about design wall. What is it? So the design wall is, a, you can make them all kinds of different ways. You can purchase a setup that kind of is collapsible, that you can set up. Basically what it comes down to is some type of a fabric that has enough grip that's gonna create some friction with the cotton fabric that it'll stay up on so that you can audition it standing up instead of just laying it down on the floor or on a table, right? So I like to go with the really low budget method and this is what I do in my home studio as well as in this studio that I have in town as well and that is just putting up a piece of cotton batting up on a wall. I've done it in the past with polyester batting and it works okay. Cotton to cotton seems to have a really good grip so they tend to stick really easily on it. So let me show you what I've done here. In this studio I have quilts all around on the walls. So I just put two big pins with a chunk of batting over this quilt that's already on the wall so that this quilt can hold my piece of batting and that's how I've created this really quick and easy method of having a design wall here for you all to see. So if you're wondering what that is in the background, it's another quilt that's actually underneath it. So then we just put a piece of batting. It's just pinned on the top two corners. The rest hangs down. And then I just take my blocks, put them on here, and when you smooth it, it just sticks to the cotton fabric. So at my home studio, I'm even worse than this. I just push pin the batting chunk right into the drywall. And uh, that's how I prefer to do it. So a lot of different ways you can research that, but I know people are gonna ask. So that's what I did here. Now I have, I made 42 blocks, but I'm only gonna use 35 for this. I wanted to make sure that it's all in the shot and you all can see it. So then you can play around with your layout. How many blocks across by how many blocks you want down. So here I have five blocks across by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. So seven times five is 35. So this is the quilt top that I'll get out of 35 blocks. Now if you're not, or maybe you're new to quilting and you've never made a quilt top before and you're kind of designing your own thing, you have to remember, this looks huge, but there's space in between each block because they haven't yet been sewn together. So keep in mind that when we start to piece these together, you're gonna lose a lot of the size of the blocks because they'll all be put together. So basically when these two get sewn together, we'll lose a half of an inch here. That'll be a quarter of an inch from this block and a quarter of an inch from this block in the seam allowance once these are sewn. So this whole roll is gonna shrink by half an inch, another half inch, another half inch, and another half inch, all right? So just keep that in mind, and you'll start to see it as we piece the blocks together to make rows. You'll see how much shorter it is, and that way you can uh, decide how many blocks you want total. But if you make all 42 blocks, depends on the manufacturer, but most of them will give you about 42 squares in one of those 10-inch stacks. I would go six blocks across by seven blocks down. And then if you remember, our blocks are nine and a half inches tall. So if you go seven blocks down and you have the blocks oriented vertically, so you're already getting more length this way, you're gonna end up with a really nice sized lap quilt, all right? So we're gonna play a little bit with the layout right now. I just went ahead and threw them on here. And this is one of the things that I love to do, especially when you're using a lot of different fabrics, is to put it up on the design wall and step back it often helps also to take a picture with your smartphone so you can see it further away and you're more easily able to recognize, oh, I have two, two similar fabrics right here. Let me swap those blocks for a different one. And then you can play a little bit with the layout of the block. If you recall, the blocks are rectangles. So that means you're not really just gonna be able to go like this because they're not gonna match up, but you can flip the block completely, all right? And keep them the same way so that they match up height wise as we stitch the rows together so say we alternated every other row so that the little samosa triangle chunk is going the other way you can even do them like this and put them all that way okay so you would start to play around with the different blocks and you can swap them around some of you out there have already been asking about cutting them down to nine inches square you can cut them down to nine inches square, then you will have you know, the four equal sides of a square, so then you could have some going this way, some going this way, some going that way, 
and then you would be able to play around more with the design layout. For me, I don't want to waste the fabric, so I won't bother to trim them down, but just know that that is an option for you. What I'm going to do right now is play around with this layout and show you a few different ways that you can lay out your blocks if you're making the blocks just like I've shown you. here's one way. I went ahead and every other one I flipped it. So you'll see that you'll get this kind of funky design right here. If you're going to do something like this, you may want to look and see which fabrics are now touching. So for example, this one here, the background piece matches this piece. So this is kind of getting lost. So I would probably swap this guy out for something else. Maybe something like that. But now this is kind of too close to this one. So I probably don't want it there either. And I think I like that a little better, even though these two are here. There's not that much blue in the quilt. So that's how you play around with it and kind of just go and switch things up a little bit. Okay, so that is another layout that you can do. Now let's go back and flip all of them with instead of the triangle going this way, I'm going to flip all of them this way and see what we end up with. So now with all of them flipped the other way, let's look and see what I don't like. This is too red right here for me. I don't like the way that that looks, but I don't want to move this one here because then I'll have like red, orange, red. So this one I want, maybe I'll move the red one. And these two are the same fabric, so I'm going to swap this guy out for here. Oops, a little bit better, even though I don't like this red and red. Oh, I'm going to flip this guy. Now let's play with another design. I'm doing one column going down, or face up, the other one down. I'll show you. I think I have finalized what I want to be my final quilt top layout. And of course, the more you look at it, the more you're going to keep swapping out blocks, and then you have two of the same colors next to it. So at some point, you have to just draw the line and say, okay, I'm happy with my blocks. And so you will minimize that with more variety in the different fabrics that you choose. So a lot of times I get questions from beginners saying, hey, if I'm cutting up my own 10 inch squares from yardage, do you think five or six fabrics is going to be enough? It might be if you're going to be okay with playing around with some blocks and knowing that maybe two that are diagonal from each other will have the same fabrics featured and things like that. But the more variety in the fabrics and prints that you use, the easier it's going to be to get a scrappier look in your finished design layout. So think about that when you're making the quilt top and choosing your fabric. All right, so now let's move on to how I put these blocks together to create an entire quilt top so we can move along in the finishing process. So I'm going to show you the easiest, kind of more straightforward way. There's a lot of different techniques and ways to put them together. Uh, and I'm going to share with you what the simplest one is because I noticed that a lot of you following along are actually making this as your first quilt. So if you have the chunk of batting or another type of design wall, lay it all out, decide on exactly how you want the quilt top to look, and then we'll start pulling one block at a time. So let's go with this row one, we'll call it at the top. And I'm going to gather these blocks together, keeping the first one that starts from left to right on top. So I'll get this guy, then this one, and make sure that you don't turn them. You want to keep them in the same orientation, especially if you're alternating the way that the blocks are flipped every column like I am. If you laid it out in the most simplest design where all the little triangles are going in the same direction, as you go to sew them, just take a quick glance at the ones that you grab and make sure that the little triangle is going the correct way. But I'll share with you that in a moment. So this is my first block. The second one is behind. I will grab the third and place it behind. And the, the key is to keep it exactly as it is here. So as I get to the quilt or to the sewing machine to sew these, I know that my first one needs to be sewn to the second from left to right across. All right. So I have these five blocks for row one. Let's head over to the sewing machine and show you how to piece them together. Simple things that you did just to make the quilt block, so pretty sides touching of each of the different blocks and using that quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, now 
Because these blocks are so small, they're not that big for me, I like to just go ahead and piece them together using no pins, but you can always grab some pins and place one or two along the side edge that you're going to sew. So I know that as I pulled these blocks off the wall, this was block one from left to right, right? One, this was two, this was three, four, and five. And I have them oriented correctly because I know that my blocks alternate, triangle going up, triangle going down. Next one should have triangle at the top, next one at the bottom, next one at the top. So I just do a quick double check, make sure I didn't change any directions of anything, and now we'll sew them together. So this was on top, this is one. We're gonna sew one and two together. So I will place them side by side, flip one on top of the other so pretty sides are touching, and if you did a good job trimming everything, these two edges should match up. I'll set my machine to a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I will piece these two together. And for the construction part, I like to have my stitch length at two millimeters, so 2.0 millimeter setting. Okay. So again, keeping everything oriented correctly. This was block one, this was block two. So don't flip them because then you'll swap them in the wrong direction. So this was on top, one, two, the next one should alternate. So now I'm gonna go with the third one from left to right. So we continued that to attach the fifth block. Now we're here at the ironing board and you can also, I mean, there's so many different ways that you can piece your blocks together. You can put post-it notes here, label them like A1, A2, A3, A4 by rows and columns. I just take a picture on my phone and just glance at it every once in a while to make sure I'm still on track. So now we're gonna press the seams from where we sewed. I like to do the first row and just press all the seams on the whole row to the left. So I'll show you how to do that, especially if you're a beginner. I lift up the one that is in the direction of where I want the seam allowance to go. So this is block two, I want seam allowance to go to the left. So I lift up because the seam allowance then gets kind of pushed to the left, all right? And then I grab my iron and I just place it in here and you can see what that does, is that it makes it so that the seam allowance is all being pushed to the left because this one is lifted up. You can hit it with some steam if you want to, that's your preference, and then I just give it a good press, nice and flat. We'll scoot over to the seam between block two and three, do the same thing, I lift it so that seam allowance can get pushed to the left, and give it a good press down, and I'll just continue that to the next one, and the next one. Then for the second row as we piece it, we're gonna put the seam allowance in the other direction, to the right, so I'll show you how we do that, so that when we do sew the two rows together, all these intersecting seams abut really nicely. So we've pieced together the second row. Now I oriented here at the ironing board the way that it's gonna look on the quilt. So this is the first block from left to right this way. And now I said we wanna press the seam allowance so that it's going to the right because the top row, the first one, we pressed it to go to the left. So I want the opposite. But remember that I lift this up. If I lift this one and press it, I'm gonna be pressing it to the left the same way I did the first row. So I first oriented the way that it goes on the quilt. Then we're gonna flip it and I know that now this is my fifth block and I can press to the left because when it's flipped to the correct way, this is actually pressed to the right. So I hope that makes sense. It's just because I'm right-handed, so it's easier for me to lift this way and press the seam allowance to the left. So because I want it to go to the right, I flip the row upside down. And now you'll see we flip it back to the correct way that this row will be pieced into the quilt. And when we flip over, the seam allowance is pressed to the right. So you see the seam allowance here and they're all done the same way. So I'll place this on the design wall directly underneath row one. Now we're back to pressing and this is row three. So make sure that you have it the way that you want it first. 
And then remember that one, three, five, and seven, all the odd numbered rows, I'm pressing the seam allowances to the left and the even number rows are going to the right. All right, so I think this one goes like this. So I will lift here and press to the left. recap all of our rows are pieced together individually one three five and seven have all the seam allowances pressed to the left two four and six have the seam allowances pressed to the right so here's what I like to do next I don't just go ahead and piece all the rows together to make the full quilt top instead I'll kind of split the quilt somewhere in half so because we have an odd number of rows here I'll just separate three row sections one two and three as one chunk of the quilt and then the remaining four rows as a separate chunk of the quilt. So let's go ahead and piece these three together first. So of course, you can only do two at a time. So we're gonna grab this guy, flip it over on top of number two here, row two, pretty sides touching. And I like to just pr put pins at the most important intersection. So you notice I didn't use pins when I was piecing the blocks together to make the rows, but here we have one, two, three, and four intersections that we need to match up so that everything looks really nice and clean put together. So I'm gonna take the top one, flip it on top of this one, pretty side touching, and I hold it right here because I know where they two meet here, this is the edge that I need to stitch up. So let me show you how I put pins at the block intersections. So let me reopen this so you can see again. This is row one of the quilt from left to right, and this is row two. So I put this one on top of row two, pretty sides touching, and I'm gonna line up the raw edges here. I'm gonna grab my pins and place one pin just at the intersection of the squares. This is block one, the second block of that second row. I want this seam and this seam to be matched up. So because we pressed the seam allowances of this guy to the left, that was row one, the odd number, and the seam allowance of row two and the even numbers to the right, you can see that the bulk of the seam allowances are going to abut nicely because they're each going in a different direction. And by that I mean that when I match up those two seam intersections, I have the seam allowance from one going to the right and the other one going to the left. So you reduce bulk there and they kind of grab each other to making it easier to insert a pin and to sew. So I have that there, I'll slide it over and I'll do the same thing for the next intersection. And you don't have to mess with the seam allowances because they're already going in opposite directions if you do what I showed you about even and odd numbered rows. So I just place pins at the intersections and that's it. If you're more of a beginner and you feel like you need more pins to help you keep the, the raw edges lined up, feel free to add more pins along the edge here. Now we're gonna sew it up using the same quarter of an inch seam allowance that we just used to put the blocks together to create the rows. And this is going to be the same steps that you'll take to attach all of them in each section. Now we press the seam the same way as it was sewn to kind of set the stitches. And then we're gonna open it up and press the seam to one direction. I you sometimes try to kind of press it to where there's less patchwork so it's less bulky, but in something like this where pretty much all the blocks are even, just press it in one direction. And I, since I'm right-handed, I'm gonna do it the same way I did the rows, where I lift up the left side and push the seam allowance to the left. And then you'll see that by pinning them with the seam allowance bulk going one direction and the other, we get really nice intersections where all of our blocks meet. So now, to attach the third row, I like to kind of put this back where it's gonna be in the correct orientation so you know on which side of this two row chunk that we've just pieced, we need to attach the third one. So I don't really have to get it up there, but I know that it goes like this. So I know that this edge is the one that needs to be sewn here to row number three. So I'll place pins again at the intersections and sew this one together. All right, so let's check in on where we are. I have pieced together rows one, two, three into what I call that first chunk of the quilt. Now we're gonna start dealing with connecting these four rows. And the reason I like to split the quilt up is that it becomes a little bit too cumbersome to be 
adding one more row to an already bigger piece and all the way another one and another one. And you don't really have to be toting around the entire quilt like that every time you're going to attach a row. So I like to break it up into more manageable chunks. And of course that's going to depend on the full size of the quilt. So if you have a really large quilt, I might break it up into five or six different pieces. This is just three rows, four rows, and that's what I recommend for this size of a quilt. So this chunk is done. I can just leave it up here. Now we're going to go ahead and begin again with these two. Then I'll add these two to it, okay? So row four and five are going to go like this. I put pins along this top edge intersection and sew them together with my quarter inch seam allowance. And you're just going to continue to do that until you have a bottom chunk here that's made up of these four blocks. So I've pieced together the bottom four rows into their own chunk and it goes like this. So now we can go in and take the two smaller subsections that we created, right, with three rows up here and four down here, and piece them together down the middle. And what this does by breaking it up is that it makes it a little bit more manageable to sew along the rows so you don't have that much drag of the rows and the heavier and bigger the quilt gets, it tends to kind of want to pull away from you and the needle on the sewing machine. So now we really only have one short seam across this way that we need to deal with the entire quilt at a time. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to flip this guy onto here and then sew this one seam across the middle right here the same way that we've done all the others. I'll give it a press and then I'll meet you back here when I lay out the entire quilt top. So here is my finished samosa quilt top. Let's go ahead and take a quick measurement so we can see what it finished as. And this may vary on yours depending again on the number of blocks that you made, how consistent your seam allowances were, and really how wide your seam allowances were. I tend to sew really skinny quarter inches or what we call scant quarter inch seams. So let's see what I got. And I measured down the middle. I have about 43 and a half inches wide and about 64 inches in length going this way. So that's a nice size lap quilt. If you end up with something like this, if you use 35 blocks like I did, and you wanna make it just a little bit bigger, remember you can always add more blocks or an even easier way to make the size larger would be to add some borders on the top and bottom if you want it longer, or on the sides if you want it wider, or both if you just want to increase the overall size of your finished quilt top. So now this is your homework. If you're following along with the quilt along, go ahead and make trim and press all your blocks, piece them together into the rows, the different sections, and put it together till you get to this point where your quilt top is complete. And in the next video, we'll talk more about battings, my recommendations for battings, backing, and how we can quickly and easily finish off our quilt top. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial on how to put all your blocks together to create the finished samosa quilt top. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, share it across the different social media sites and with your quilty friends. Don't forget to do your homework. And of course, remember to click that subscribe button right here on my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.